mundane. This is the word I'd use to describe the events which unfold in these films from director Richard Linklater. Not mundane for us as audience members, but mundane for the characters. Linklater takes characters unsatisfied with their situations and bored with their day-to-day -day lives and manages to weave something special from their pedestrian experiences. In the 70s, oh my god, they obviously suck. Right? <laughs> Come on. Maybe the 80s will be radical. So today I want to use one of my favourite films, Dazed and Confused, to discuss how Richard Linklater achieves this sense of extraordinary from the ordinary. This excitement from mundanity. How Linklater captures moments, explores characters, and fuels his own storytelling ideas. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> One of my favourite moments from Dazed and Confused, or any film for that matter, is the introduction of the Emporium. Here comes the story of the the man the authorities came to play. The use of Bob Dylan's hurricane, the slow motion, the teenage energy, all of it works cohesively to convey the emotion of not just the scene, but the film overall. I think one of Linklater's talents is presenting moments on film using the tools at his disposal as a director to convey a desired emotion. Dazed and Confused, like Linklater's other films, excels in drawing emotion from what we call human moments. Unsurprisingly, these are what we connect with most. Unique characters with goals and flaws which resonate with us. No epic visual spectacle required. In the case of Dazed, these human moments are presented in the form of teenagers searching for their place in society. Unsatisfied, self-conscious and bored teenagers. Ironically, this is what appeals most to the audience of the film. It's this feeling of being underwhelmed by our surroundings, which Linklater knows we can relate to. I will admit, I'm one of the few who will admit, like, oh yeah, th this was a point in my life, or this is me and my friends, or yeah, I met a girl in Philadelphia and we walked around all night. And... Though it's hardly the only emotion present within the film, this satisfaction, in my opinion, plays a major role in almost every action we see on screen. It drives almost every human moment. And without a driving emotional force behind a scene, how would we feel anything at all for our characters or situation? Of course, the action of a scene is just as important as the actions of the characters within it. If someone told me that three characters walking into an emporium would be an emotional moment, I wouldn't believe it, or a drunk group of friends ranting about high school on a football field at night. However, as Linklater puts it, these moments work because he experiences the emotion behind them just as much as the audience, and tries his hardest to share the experience with us. I take something in boyhood, like, you know, a kid staring at a decomposing bird. I did that, I remember it but will that mean anything to anybody else? And I don't have to think too much about that. I go, I, it will. Film being a cohesion of visuals and audio, it can't be denied that the soundtrack plays a major role in conveying the emotions of the film's key moments. Many see the use of a soundtrack as opposed to a traditional film score as simply laziness or an attempt at nostalgia. And while the recent influx of pop songs in film can no doubt be attributed to both, for every Suicide Squad, there's a Guardians of the Galaxy. By that I mean, if the soundtrack serves an emotional or storytelling purpose, then why shouldn't it be taken advantage of? Let's see what my favourite Days to Confuse moment would sound like without Hurricane driving the emotional energy. Loses some of the charm, doesn't it? Now that being said, I do agree that a soundtrack of pre-existing songs makes it a lot easier for a filmmaker to create an emotional moment. And thankfully Linklater's driving force for his moments, in my opinion, is his dialogue. When the hell are you talking about, girl? You weren't thinking about it, were you? Gilligan's Island? It's what's called a male pornographic fantasy. Oh my. In his novel screenplay, Sid Field writes, Dialogue serves two main purposes. Either it moves the story forward or it reveals information about the main character. While some consider dialogue contradictory to the old show don't tell motto of storytelling, some things are best expressed through speech. The aforementioned football scene demonstrates an example of this in the form of internal conflict. Sid Field writes that conflict can either be internal or external and must be at the hub of the story as it is the core of strong action and strong character. Hence why every significant character in Dazed has a unique internal or external conflict. Pink feels like he's been controlled by those around him, Mitch faces a series of conflicts as he runs with an older crowd, and Don's internal conflict is best expressed on the football field. I just want to look back and say that I did it the best I could while I was stuck in this place. 
Had as much fun as I could when I was stuck in this place. See, every line of dialogue in Dazed achieves one of the two main purposes of dialogue. Even if it is corny, Don's little speech reveals information about who he is as a character. I think the dialogue in Days of Confuse contributes to Linklater's brilliance as a writer and director, his ability to create excitement from mundanity. Ironically, the only line of dialogue which neither moves the story forward nor reveals character has become the most iconic. That I say, all right, all right, all right. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully have more video essays and short films up on here as soon as possible. But in the meantime, check out my most recent essay on Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds.